Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Assembly Lines Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Torrance. So, I got a package from Bulgaria today. Let's open it up and find out what's inside. Alright, we are looking at the Fast Chip 2E from Plamen Vaisalov in Bulgaria. This must be the speed gauge. Tell you how fast it's going. Ribbon cable. Okay, oh, there's another speed gauge. And this must be the Fast Chip 2E. And this has been reviewed many times before on the internet. Uh, it's the first time I've ever had one though. So the Ultra Warp uses a lot of old school chips and a bunch of glue logic. Uh, the only thing really modern in this is the SRAM here for the memory so you can swap out the Apple IIe's memory uh, for the onboard memory here. Plamen's Fast Chip 2E uses all modern chips so it still has a 65C816 uh, but it's got the SRAM as well as a complex programmable logic device, uh, CPLD, uh, just to glue everything together. In addition, Plamens comes with the controller which allows you to change the speed. Uh, Henry Corbis is working on a oscillator that will let you change the speed with a knob just like this, uh, but hopefully that'll be out soon. To test the FastChip 2E, I wrote an assembly language program that uses the no slot clock and a wait routine to time how long it takes to run the wait routine a certain number of times. So here's my assembly language routine and you can see that it's pretty simple. I'm just calling the clock routine, I'm getting the time, and then I'm calling my wait routine. This wait routine was actually lifted out of the system ROM from FCA8 and you can't actually call the routine that's in ROM because if you do that then the fast chip 2E will slow down for the system ROM calls. I used a basic program to call the assembly language program and then I just used low res graphics to actually display the output. So let's go ahead and we're going to run this and see how the performance behaves according to what it should based on the speed. All right, so as we were expecting, uh, around 1.0, 1.01. Go up to 1.1, and it adjusts, 1.1. So at least according to my basic program and my assembly program, we're getting the speed that uh, Plamen has promised for the fast chip 2E. So just as a quick test, I want to actually confirm that calling a system ROM routine actually slows down the fast chip 2E. So here in my assembly language program, instead of doing a jump to my own weight subroutine, I'm going to change the code to actually jump to the system ROM weight routine at FCA8. And then we'll see if we do indeed get the slowdown that we expect. All right, so now I'm jumping into the ROM, the system ROM routine. We'll see if that makes any sort of difference. All right, so you can see that even though I have the speed set to 16.6, um, I'm only getting pretty much 1, 1 1.01, 1.02 megahertz. And that's just because I'm jumping into a system ROM and the fast chip automatically throttles down whenever you do disk access or go into system ROM. So the Fast Chip 2E comes with a control board which lets you set the speed as well as other things. And for example the knob which I've shown before, that just controls the speed. Uh, this first button here actually switches from either accelerated to normal mode. The second button actually stops the CPU completely or restarts it. And the third button just switches between various display modes. So here's the speed, this is the slinky RAM factor. Uh, memory bank mode, here is the RAMWorks memory mode, 
And then finally, this shows some status of some config internal configuration registers. All right, so let's take a look at the configuration panel for the FastChip 2E. And to do that, when I start up, I just hit the escape key. Uh, first thing you can do is you can just set the speed. Uh, so this would be the speed after it starts up. Um, so you just use the arrow keys and set what you want. Um, you can actually also disable it. You can also say what to do with your slots. So by default, the FastChip 2E uh, disables the speed for any access to the slots because it's assuming that there's a printer card in there or something that you know could, could get messed up by the speed. But if you know that your card is compatible with uh, the FastChip, you can actually set that particular slot to be normal or fast in that case if you want it to uh, uh, be accelerated. All right, next. Uh, here's a bunch of miscellaneous options. So this is if you want to see the startup graphic splash, the FastChip 2E sp uh, splash. Um, how long do you want it to delay before you uh, hit the escape key? Um, the sound mode is interesting. So this is what to do with the sound routines um, when it's accelerated. All right, so let's go ahead and create a quick sound routine so we can test the uh, sound generation with the FastChip. So I'm getting this from assembly lines. We're just going to create a quick assembly language program uh, around 2000. And so what I'm going to do is just fill this area with a bunch of no-ops. At the top, I'm going to put a load accumulator with C030. So we can see that. And then at the very bottom, at 2100, I'm going to put a jump back to the top. Okay, so let's run that. 1000 go. Okay, so there's our tone at 1 megahertz. And as we increase the speed, you can see it definitely scales until we can't even hear it at 16.6. Okay. And so we can actually go below 1. It's nice. For the different sound modes, you really need to experiment with the options depending upon your software. The default is distorted, which means that it just operates at the maximum possible speed. And as we saw, the sound actually scales then with the speed of the uh, fast chip. Uh, there's other options such as fast, which just introduces a continuous delay. Uh, there's normal, uh, which just runs at normal speed then, so that'll slow down the fast chip. Uh, and then there's music and hi-fi. Uh, which are both just slightly different tweaks on the normal. Um, so the problem with all of these options other than distorted is that they will definitely slow down the speed uh, when they go through a sound routine. So you just really need to experiment depending on your software, game, etc. Uh, to see if the distortion in the music is worth changing this setting or not. Next is joystick delay. So some games um, will be fine with the fast chip 2E at say 16.6 or some high speed. Um, other games might have problems if they have critical timing loops. So you can put in a delay for when the program reads the joystick um, just so it slows it down. So you can do this to a short delay or a long delay. Now be warned uh, that this actually might affect the speed of the game. So the fast chip 2E has two uh, built-in kind of virtual RAM cards and the first one is a RAM factor and this just says how big do you want it uh, 256 is the maximum but you can uh, turn it off um, if you get the more expensive fast chip 2e I think it comes with 512 instead and then you can say what slot do you want this to be in uh, you should make sure uh, to put this into a slot that is not occupied by another card um, and if you actually already have a RAM factor this will work fine uh, and it'll just actually give you even more memory. Just make sure to not pick the same slot. And then you can also simulate a RamWorks card as well. And then here you just say whether you want to turn that off or use the full memory. Uh, this is actually not compatible with the RamWorks if you already have one. Uh, so you want to make sure to turn this off if you have a RamWorks. Okay, the last setting is the backlight. So there's different modes here. Fade, speed, red, green, blue, red, green, blue are obvious, off is also obvious. Uh, fade just kind of cycles in and out. That's what I have it set to right now. And then speed just varies the color of the backlight uh, depending on how fast it's going. 
All right, let's take a look at the last things in the configuration and control panel. Uh, there's a system test that you can run. And then we can look at the about uh, FastShip 2E. All right, so here is Choplifter at 16 megahertz. Uh, we can just take that down to normal. Okay, or we can go down really slow and see every single frame rate. Olympic Decathlon was one of my favorite games as a kid, but I could never beat Bruce or Caitlyn Jenner's record in the 100 meter dash. So the record was 10.94 seconds. And let's see if we can beat it today using Plowman's Fast Chip 2E. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the starting line and then I'm just gonna turn down the speed to 0.2. And by doing that, I hope I can just get in more keystrokes in between each measurement. All right, there you have it folks, a time of 5.6 seconds. So normally in this event you get maybe a thousand points if you were amazing. Uh, for that performance, I got 3,390 points. So read it and weep, Jenner. All right, so now we've had a chance to compare both the Fast Chip 2E and the Ultra Warp. So which one should you buy? Um, it's kind of a matter of personal taste. I would say if you want an old school retro feel on a board that you can put together yourself, then probably the Ultra Warp is the way to go. Uh, the Fast Chip 2E is a beautiful piece of engineering. Uh, it looks to be highly reliable. Uh, the only thing I really didn't like about it was the exposed uh, control board and it would be nice if Plumman could figure out a way to uh, enclose this maybe in some plexiglass the same as the interface card. Uh, but this is kind of a minor quibble. So I would say either one is great. They'll both do the job. Uh, as soon as Henry comes out with the scalable oscillator for his board, uh, then I think it's just a tie between the two. I'll have links in the show notes and thanks for watching.